Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Alhamdulillahi wa kafa Thumma salatu wassalam Ala ibadihi ladhi nasfafa wa ba'd Rabbi syurah min sadri Wa yassari amri Wahlal uqdata min lisani Yafqahu kawli I have to give it thanks and praises to Allah the Almighty and send it peace and salutation to the seal of the messengers Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his family members, his companions and whoever followed the Akhwist to the day of judgment and to proceed. Inshallah today we'll continue uh, reading from what we were reading on the commentary of Hadith number four about the creation of each and every one of us, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned in the Hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, in the Ahadakum Yijma'u Khalquhu Fi Bakhna Ummihi Arba'ina Yawman E, Lutfa, that the creation of one of you is put together in the belly of his mother for 40 days as a drop of sin, then another 40 days as a clot of blood, then another 40 days as the muscle of flesh, then the angel was saying to them, so we mentioned what Ibn Rajab mentioned in support of that, the verses of the Quran that talk about these stages that the Prophet mentioned in the Hadith. And we mentioned that this is one of the signs indicating that the Prophet is the true messenger of Allah the Almighty because these things are from the relative gay that people of that time do not know because they do not have the access and the means of knowing that. And then we mentioned what our local scholar in the Qayyim also mentioned about how Allah Almighty mentioned these things, not to be mentioned, but He mentioned them just so that we will think and ponder over the origin of our creation, what we were, and what we have, what we have become. And this is what our local scholar in the Qayyim mentioned in his book, Miftah Dar is Sa'ada, the key to the abode of, to the abode of happiness. He mentioned, and we read some of it last week, actually Monday, we came to where the Qayyim spoke about the nose in particular and how Allah the Almighty um, carved the nose and placed the mason bone on its right position and then covered it with flesh and then divided between the nose with dick, with two nostrils, even though it's one nose, but it has what, two passages just so that if one passage is stuffed with the waves that come from our head, meaning, you know, milkers and stuff, the other passage would be available for us to be able to breathe in oxygen and breathe out uh, carbon dioxide. And this is from the wisdom of Allah to the Almighty. And today we're going to move on to read some of what Ibn Qayyim mentioned. Ibn Qayyim said, think about how he, the Almighty, carved the mouth in the most suitable place in our body. You know, the mouth cannot be anywhere in our body that will be more suitable than where it is. Could you imagine your mouth is in your, in your belly? Like if you just <laughs> eat and then you put it here. It doesn't make sense. Or you talk. How can you talk when your mouth is in your, in your belly? So you can see that a lot of us just place the mouth at the right place, the most suitable position. Right? He said, Allah Almighty has placed the mouth, in the mouth, many benefits and many tools, including the tool of tasting. We're able to taste with our, with our tongue. The tool of speaking, the tool of grinding, which are the, the teeth that we have. We use that to grind the food that we, that we chew. And swallowing. He said, He has made the tongue the boneless organ to be the interpreter of the king of all the organs of the body, and that is the heart. So our tongue, out of his wisdom, he made the tongue what? Boneless. It has no bone in it. And as we move further, you know, Qayyim will mention the hikmah, the wisdom behind the tongue being what? Boneless. Just as he made the ear to be the messenger that carries information to the king, he made the tongue the messenger that sends out messages of the king. So what does he what is he referring to when he said the king? He said just as he made the ear to be the messenger 
that receives information to the king, he made the tongue to be the interpreter that sends out the information of the king to the people. So what is the king doing? Huh? No. The heart. Right? So whatever is in our heart, what expresses what is in our heart? The tongue. So he said the tongue is the messenger of the heart. Because if the tongue did not send the message out, the message will remain dead, right? And the ear is the messenger that receives information from outside to the, to the inside. So he said the heart is the king. As the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned that in the body there is a muscle of flesh. If that muscle is corrupt, then the rest of the body will be, will be corrupt. So he said the, um, the tongue sends out the message of the king. And out of his wisdom, he made the ears and the eyes apparent because they carry information from outside to the inside. So the eye carry information, whatever it sees, to the heart. So the eye is what? It's apparent. And likewise, the ear. And then he said, the reason being is because they carry outside information to, to inside, right? And because, and he made the talk hidden because it sends out information from inside to, to outside. So the tongue is hidden because it sends out the information of the, of the king outside. But the eye and the ear, they receive information from outside and bring it, and bring it inside. All this is just the thinking analysis of our little style of Ibn, Ibn Qayyim. So, and because it is the most important order after the heart, he's referring to the tongue, right? It has to be protected. So what did the Lord want to protect our tongue with before we read what the Nukayim said? How is our tongue protected? The two jaws and what else? The two lips. Right? So these are the jaws. And then the lips close. So these are four lots all together that the Lord want to use to protect the, the tongue. So he said it needs to be protected. This is why Allah created for the tongue four lots. The two jaws and the two lips. Likewise, the tongue is one of the most lenient organs of the body. If it is exposed out, it will be dry and thus cannot function. Because the tongue functions when it is what? Wet. Think about it. When you are dehydrated, sometimes you cannot what? Roll your tongue. You can't even, and your speech is not even out. So this is the wisdom of Allah the Almighty that He keep the tongue what? Hidden and moisturize. Whenever we need to use it, it's easy for us to, to speak. This is all, all this is a thinking analysis of Allah Muskala in the Qayyim al Jawziya. So this cause the tongue functions when it is when it is wet. And there is much other wisdom behind us. I haven't come across, you know, any modern thinker in the history of the modern intellectuals who made such a beautiful analysis like Allah Muskala in the Qayyim did. You know, um, this type of thinking is the thinking of the scholars, you know, and like he, pers he personified the organs by naming them messengers. He named the ear a messenger. He named the tongue a messenger. You know, he made them like humans. If I say the ear is a messenger, how is the ear a messenger? Is the messenger of the, of the heart. How is the ear the messenger of the heart? Because it receives information from outside to, to, the, to the heart. And then he also named the tongue a messenger. Why? Because the tongue sends out the information of the king to the, to the outside. This is a philosophical thinking, not scientific method. You know, these analyses are so unique and are only present in the former generation thinkers like the likes of Ibn Abi Dunya, you know, Imam al Qurtubi. You know, Ibn al Qayyim, Abu Hatim, and their likes. We ask about the Almighty to make us among those who follow their footsteps and name. Now, let's move on to talk about what Ibn al Qayyim said regarding, you know, thinking about our creation and knowing the existence of Allah the Almighty. Ibn al Qayyim said that Allah the Almighty decorated the mouth with the teeth. You know, if you have no teeth, you will see that you look what? Funny, right? 
So if you see people with no teeth, even the way they talk, they muffle when they when they talk. Could you imagine being without teeth? But Allah Almighty honor of his wisdom, he decorated our mouth with, with teeth. Now without no teeth, your dog was no cave in. Yeah, to cave subhanAllah. <laughs> you know, so these things did not happen by chance. He said, Allah Almighty has stabilized the roots of our teeth. He sharpened their edges. And he keeps taking us back to think that all this came from the trap of what? Sin. He sharpened their edges. He whitened their colors. Do you think it's by chance that our teeth is what? It's white? You know, when you smell, people say it's beautiful, what? White teeth. All this is from the wisdom of Allah. And he made them arranged in rows, made them equal and symmetrically arranged, resembling arranged curves. Then he protected these teeth with the two lips, making the two lips to be the completer of the articulations of, of words. Out of his wisdom, he has made the lips fleshy, free from bones. Just as our tongue is free from bone, our lips are also free from, from bones and veins, so that it can be used for many, many reasons. Why do you think our lips are boneless? What do you think will happen if our, teeth, our lips have bones on them? It will not be flexible. And so, and for that reason, we will not be able to suck. We will not be able to kiss. You understand? Allah made our lips the way He made them, so that we can, we can kiss, we can suck to the end. All this is from the wisdom of Allah, the Almighty. And look at babies when they come out from the bellies of their mothers. They need to be able to uh, to proceed. You know, so as they grow older. Out of the wisdom of Allah the Almighty, once they started getting ready to eat, their teeth will start what? Coming out. And when their teeth come out, then the time for them to win out will come because, you know, some babies, they bite their what? Their mothers. You understand? So it's from the wisdom of Allah the Almighty that He did not create them with teeth at the very early age. Out of mercy for the parents. Because what do you think? They don't need it then. So when they need the teeth, Allah Almighty allow the teeth to grow gradually as they grow older. All this did not happen by chance. This is from the wisdom of Allah, the Almighty. So He has made the lips fleshy, free from bones and veins, so that it can be used for sucking drinks and to make it easy for Him to open and close them. He created the throats in different shapes and forms. What do you think our voices differ? You know, all is from the wisdom of Allah the Almighty. Our food is not the same. He created them in different shades and forms. They differ in their narrowness, in their spaciousness, their thickness, in their thickness, their smoothness, and their roughness, in their lightness, in their lengthness and shortness, being the reason why voices differ. So much so, you can hardly come across two people that have the same word, voice. It's difficult, you know, when you hear the voice of Zeki in the different, in another continent, you're like, oh, hold on, I know this voice somewhere. You understand? All this is from the wisdom of Allah, the Almighty. It didn't happen by chance. This is the doing of Allah, the Almighty. So as they said, it's so difficult that you hardly come across a voice that resembles the voice of the other. To the point that the testimony of the blind man is accepted by his ability to identify and differentiate between the voices of, of people. So if a blind man is present, right, in a crime scene, and he hears those who are dead, and he's able to identify voices, he can be brought to testify, and his testimony will be, will be accepted. So this is from the wisdom of Allah, the Almighty. May Allah Almighty increase us in faith. Amen. Our noble scholar Ibn al Qayyim said, the, um, This is so deep that the testimony of the blind man will be, will be accepted due to his ability to differentiate between the voices of people, just as the 
the one with the eyesight is able to identify people by their looks and shape. And the random resemblance in people's voices is the same as the random resemblance in people's what? Form and, and shape. Sometimes you look at somebody and say, oh wow, he looks like Fulan. But when you come closer, you can tell, no, he's not what? Well, Fulan. And sometimes you can hear someone's voice and be like, wow, he sounds like Fulan. But then when you listen to it again, you're like, oh no, that's not, that's not him. So there is some random resemblance here and there. But in reality, people differ in their voices just as they differ in their in their features and shape. He said, then the Almighty beautifies the head with hair. <laughs> this is the wisdom of Allah. He did not make his what? Bow. All this did not happen by chance. God have, could have created us with, without hair. But from his wisdom, he beautified our head with hair and made it to be the clothing of the head. The hair is the clothing of our, our head. And he beautified the face with what is needed of hair. He beautified the face with eyebrow, making it a protection for the eyes from the waves that they fall off from his head to his eyes. So sometimes some waves that are falling down, your eyebrow will, will block you from going into your, into your eyes. And we mentioned the wisdom behind the eye, eye lid as well. So these things, not only that they are there for beautification, they are also there for what? Of protection. This is the wisdom of Allah, the Almighty, the All Wise. You know, and He made it grow in a bow shape, and He beautified the eyelids with eyelashes. Subhanallah, natural eyelashes that Allah the Almighty gave us. But today, unfortunately, these women are putting on these fake what eyelashes, and it's not even cute. You know, you cannot replace the natural. Beauty that Allah Almighty gave you with something that is that is faith. So unfortunately, but this is what we do. But Allah Almighty beautified our eyelids with eyelashes and the face with beard and made it a symbol of masculinity and dignity in men. These beard is a symbol of what? Masculinity and dignity and beauty in men. So he then beautified the lips with mustache. And the lower leg weighs an alphacon. This is an alphacon. What do you call this in English? Smoggy. Huh? Smoggy. <laughs> <laughs> this is smoggy. I'm mad. This is not go to. They call it jazz dat. It's jazz dat. Jazz dat. Dat. J-A-Z-Z-D-O-T. Yeah, so this is the mustache, the jazz that, and the, and the beard, right? The eyebrow, the eyelash, all these are from the wisdom of Allah, the Almighty, and He beautified us with this. So we have to look at this as a tabarak Allah wa in, ahsanu, ahsanu khalikin. The thinking analysis of Ibn al-Qayyim is so unique in its style and words. The thinking analysis is what called inventors to invent something from inexistence to existence by taking example from what Allah the Almighty has what? Has created. So we ask Allah the Almighty to make us among those who believe in Him and in. Ibn Qayyim states in the following, he said, Allah the Almighty has created the hands that are a hunting tool for men and his defense weapon and made them long along with the arms. So this is the, the hand, from here to here is the hand. And this hand is our hunting tool, and our defense what? weapon. Whether we defense it with a fist to knock someone out, or we defense it by holding a weapon, a sword or a gun, whatever is these hands are our what? Defense weapon that Allah the Almighty gave us. So if you look at Allah the Almighty created these hands and stretch them with the arms, in a manner that we can reach almost every part of our body with our, with our hands. You can touch your head, your ear, your eye, your shoulder, like, you made it so easy for us to be able to do so. This is the making of Allah, the Almighty. And human beings are the only creatures that are eyeing with something like this. So and then he what? He carved the palm 
in a manner that would allow him to be able to grab with one hand. Many creatures cannot grab with one hand. They have to hold stuff with, with two hands. But the Lord Almighty creates in a manner that we can grab stuff with one, with one hand, right? In a manner that we can fold our hands and we can spread them. He carved the five fingers, each with three joints except the thumb in order to be the lap of the four fingers after folding them. And we mentioned the wisdom behind our hands, differ, I mean our fingers differing in their length and how Allah Almighty positioned it, the thumb in a different way, place. You know, he aligned the pinky, the ring, the middle, and the index finger all in the same way, joints, except the, the thumb that is positioned aside. And we mentioned the wisdom behind it in our last class, just so that when you fold your hands, you cave it in like this, it evens out to help you to have a firm work. Great, right? And then when you fold it, you can use the thumb to, to lock it. So this thumb right here is called the opposable thumb. The reason why it's called the opposable thumb because it is the only finger that you can use to touch all the other fingers, right? You can use your thumb to touch your your index, your ring, I mean your middle, your ring, and your, and your pinky. Can you use your pinky to touch your, <laughs> you know? <laughs> can you use your pinky to touch your, I mean, your index or your middle? Or it's, it's not easy. So this thumb, I mean, God placed it in this position for a reason. That's why we're able to count, you know, to do our care, to do many things. All this did not happen by chance. There is a wisdom. It happened in a perfect manner. That's why look how you mentioned here. He said, where the entire people, the former generation and the latter generation, to come together in order to rearrange this form or to arrange the fingers in a different format. Other than the arrangement of Allah, the Almighty, the Creator, they would not have been able to do so. And if they do, it will miss its function. Therefore, glorify this Allah, the Lord of all that exists. It is with these fingers that we write. Right? We use this tool to write. When we spread the fingers, they become a platform to place an item on them. Right? When we fold them like this, it becomes a cup to fetch something with it. And we put them in a fit, they become a, a defense of what? I mean, a weapon for us to defend ourselves with. And if it keeps them between folding and spreading, they become a bowl or a cup of fetching water and drinking from it. Then he plays the nails on the edges of the fingers for many reasons. To beautify the finger because if these nails are not there, our fingers will not look what the same. So these nails are there as beautification for our fingers. Not only they are there for beautification, they are the frame that supports the tips of our finger so that when we pick something, it gives it some what? Support to keep. And it is support to what? To grab. Because this nail right there is a frame. Right? So there are many wisdom behind it. What other wisdom is behind the creation of the fingernails? What else do we use our nails for? Scratch. For scratching. Right? To scratch our each spot. Look at some animals. When they want to scratch their body, sometimes they have to go and, you know, get to the wall and keep doing what? Like this. But a lot of the creators in the mind, even if you are sleeping and you are eating somewhere, automatically just stretch your arms. So the itchy spot and what? Scratch it. SubhanAllah. This is the doing of Allah the Almighty. So Tabarakallah wa Asana wa Farikim. Our Nubu Skarif Mutayim said that he placed the nails on the edges of the fingers to beautify the fingers and to strengthen the edge for him to be able to pick items with them and to scratch his body when he is itchy. And see how he guided the heart, the hands. To stretch to the itchy spots, even if one is sleeping. And for some animals, the nails are their hunting tool. And I think we mentioned this in our previous class, 
how the predators were created with and, uh, um, with paws and claws. And these claws are their defense system. They use that to hunt, they use that to defend themselves to the end. If Nakayo continues to talk about the um, anatomy of the bones and providing the wisdom of Allah the Almighty. And we said all of this are from the what? Nutfa, from the disgusting flowing. Again, we also we always have to think and reflect. All this creation, all these amazing things that are put together in this perfect manner came from a disgusting what? From a disgusting flowing. We don't like to write this understanding of the being and in. He said, if a continues to talk about the anatomy of the bones and providing and proving the wisdom of Allah the Almighty, the all knowing the Creator, he mentioned why the lower bones are thick and strong to withstand pressure that is placed on it. If you look at our lower bones, the, the, the bones of the thigh, you know, the legs, they are very well thick. The reason being because it is the foundation. Right? He mentioned why the lower bones are thick and strong to withstand pressure, I mean pressure that is placed on it, and that the butt is fleshy. Why do you think our butt is fleshy? Because we need that booster to help us. We sit most of the time driving. We sit, you know, doing our thing. So we need that booster to be able to withstand long work, long sitting. All this is from the wisdom of Allah to the Almighty. And for women, they have extra, you know, but to be, you know, it's just like a beautification, a zina for them. But all this is from the wisdom of Allah, the Almighty. So he said, he made the bad flesh to withstand long sin. And for women, there is extra flesh on their behind and hips as a symbol of feminism and sexuality. Then he explains why the heart is placed in the center of our bodies and the vital roles in place. That everything is just so perfect and unique that one has no choice but to conclude that there is a creator who put these things together in this perfect manner. How often do we praise technologies today and the brain that innovated these iPhones, you know, that innovated the airplane, that innovated all this stuff. We praise these things. But how often do we praise Allah the Almighty, the one who created this perfect human being in this perfect manner from a disgusting what? From a disgusting fluid. On the side, Ibn Qayyim said, look at the wisdom of Allah the Almighty making the lower bones of the body thick because it is the foundation. That the middle bones are lighter than the lower bones because they are carried by the lower bones. That he made the neck to be the connection of the head and the body that he placed for the next seven joints, resembling connected beads in a perfect manner. If you look at our neck, you see that it has seven what? Joints. These are the seven vertebrates. And these joints are what help us to be able to Turn our next to the, to the right and to the left and up and down without having to move our entire way. Nice. SubhanAllah. Like everything is what? Perfectly put together. This cannot happen by chance. You know, this cannot happen by, you know, a random, you know, selection like they claim. So he placed in the neck four, I mean, eight, um, I mean, seven. Joints resembling seven beads, connected beads in a perfect manner. Then he placed the neck connecting it to the chest and the back. There are 24 vertebrae from the neck to the tailbone. These vertebrae are considered the knot that tie between the ribs. Then the connected, then he connected the backbone to the chest bones and the shoulder bones to biceps from the elbow and then the biceps to the triceps from the uh, from the wrist and each bone is clothed with flesh that is suitable to its size subhanallah each bone is clothed with flesh that is suitable for for its size 
you know, our head is clothed with flesh that is suitable for the size and the shape of our skull, our arms. Even if you look at our fingers, it's clothed with flesh that is suitable for the bones. If you look at our, our biceps, our triceps, all these are clothed with flesh that are suitable for the, our thighs. This did not happen by, by chance. It happened by the doing of the Almighty, the most wise, subhanAllah. And in each bone is clothed with flesh that is suitable to its size. If one bone is missing, you know, we know there are about 300 bones as we grow, you know, the bones uh, decrease due to bones with fusion. And it decreases to about 206 as we become an adult due to fusion uh, between infancy and adulthood. But if one bone is missing, the body will not function right until this bone is amended. So sometimes as you grow and there is some deficiency in your bones and one of your bones did not develop, develop right, it will, you know, your body will not function right. I mean, it will be appearing until this bone is, is amended. Our Nobu Scarlet Ibn Qayyim mentioned He said, the doctor looks at these bones and how they are arranged in order for him to know how to treat and amend them. But the scholar looks at these bones to know the greatness of the creator, his wisdom, his knowledge, and his kindness. Then he the almighty, and, and, and that is the fact, you know, usually the doctors, they study this just to know how to fix it and amend it when there is some some problem with it. But the scholar, the people of knowledge, the believer, he look at these things and how Allah the Almighty put them together to know the greatness of Allah, to know the knowledge of Allah, to know the wisdom of Allah, just so that they will praise Him and they will submit to His will and they will yield to, to His command. But He the Almighty tied these parts together with nerves that differ in their thickness and thinness, length, shape, and size. These nerves are what holds these parts together and preserve them. There are about 529 nerves altogether in our body. The eye alone has 24 nerves with which the eye opens and closes and blinks and more. If one nerve is damaged, the eye will not function well. Likewise is the ease, is, I mean, likewise is the case with the rest of the organs. All these is from the making and the creation of the Almighty, the Allwise, from a disgusting fluid. Therefore, woe to those who deny his existence. We ask about the Almighty to grant us understanding of the being, amen. And from among the wonders in the creation of man is the hidden things that are in his body, like the heart, the liver, the lungs, the intestines, the spleen, the urinary bladder, and more. All these are amazing machines in his body that are constantly working. SubhanAllah, from the day you were created till today, 10 years, 20 years, 15 years, and these organs are constantly working. Your kidney is constantly working. Your heart is constantly beating. Your lung to the end. This is the making of Allah, the Almighty. The heart is the king of these internal organs, in the you say. It is the most valuable one of all. This is the reason why it is the in the, in the middle of the body. It is the pivot of life. It is the source of the spirit, the fountain of desire, comprehension, knowledge, courage, kindness, patience, tolerance, love, hate, woe, pleasure, anger, and more. The rest of the organs are but the armies of the heart. When the eye sees something, it sends the information to who? To the heart. It passes the information to the heart. And the tongue is the interpreter of the heart that conveys the message of the heart to the ears. And we mentioned this earlier. This is the reason why Allah the Almighty always connect these organs together when addressing us by His statement. In the Sama Wal Basura Wal Fuada Kulu Ulai Kena Anu E Masula. 
indeed the hearing, the sighting, and the heart, all of this will be brought to an account. And inshallah, we'll stop here and uh, we will continue um, in our next class. We ask the Lord Almighty to increase us in knowledge and to make us among those who put into practice what we are learning. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.